Okay, everyone. So, uh, good morning. My name's Michael Blood, and I'm a senior lecturer for maritime operations and safety at Warsash Maritime Academy, which is part of the overall body of Southampton Solent University in the UK. Um, so, the opportunity for me to come here is quite an interesting opportunity. It's my first time at HSBO. Uh, to be able to speak to such a high level, wide diversified audience of people who may hopefully either be instigating, planning, training, preparing, building, and also considering operations for high speed and fast boat operations, both militarily, civil, commercial, and also in the rescue field, which I'm going to try and concentrate on. So in order to gain an interest and give an overview, um, what I'd like to discuss is, from my aspect of training uh, as a lecturer in the University College, of the experience of the type of people we're training, but also go from two sides of the discussion, not only from the uh, college side of work that I primarily work in for STCW training, the standard of training and certification for watchkeepers, merchant fleet, but also as an operational crew member for a volunteer lifeboat, of which we've had some experience of people talking about lifeboat organisations, be it paid or volunteer, and presently to reinforce my training uh, and delivery for my delegate students. And to add a little bit of plausibility, I also volunteer on Hamble Lifeboat, which is on the River Hamble in the Solent. So, with the presentation, uh, it's got some pretty pictures. It's a little bit of an overview. There are some detailed tables that you can gain access to via the STCW or college websites and uh, obviously at the end if anyone has any technical information they might like to ask about particular courses I'll address that or give you access to that information at the end if that's okay. So a little bit of background about myself, um, I don't believe I know everything, I'm 49 this year, still make a few mistakes, I'm still learning and ready to learn and which is why I was primarily interested in coming here to present some of the information I already know and also gain some of the information that I don't know but need to know for the future to reinforce what I've experienced to pass on to my students. And therefore, my background initially was with the Royal Navy, eight years in the Royal Navy, radar specialism. I wasn't an officer in the Navy, I was just an AB, initially as a sailor, and progressed through the operations department, but did have certain responsibilities, carrying uh, man overboard exercises and helicopter or fast jet ditch protection crash boat operations with the RN over that eight year period. Uh, additionally, five years of that period I spent uh, working on the Royal Yacht Britannia and therefore we had certain types of craft at high speed with a high level audience, be it from the Royal Family and delegates and guests uh, in support of UK and international interests including international operators on board. Having said that, um, after eight years operations with the Royal Navy which I really enjoyed had an opportunity to move over to the Royal Marines. I was with the Royal Marines for eight years also. That's 16 years, full-time military career. And uh, I specialised, because I didn't join the Marines till I was 28, uh, operating in the landing craft department. And that's where I reinforced small boat operations from Gemini's and uh, small ribs all the way through to my culmination, 110 ton landing craft, obviously an astounding gate knots. Uh, but also the Mark V landing craft, twin water jet, 47 foot, 18 ton landing craft at 25 knots, carrying 35 troops was a bit intensive. Um, a lot of training then migrated on leaving the Marines. I had an opportunity to work for a lifeboat unit in Liverpool in Merseyside, and that was River Mersey and Shore Rescue. And there we were operating open top ribs, 28 foot rib, twin 225 Hondas on the back, about 40 knot boat. So to go from 25 knots to 40, was a massive step change and then to migrate from military combat and amphibious operations with rescue into specific rescue and water rescue well that was a, a complete change and it was uh, something that had to be really uh, looked at in an intensive fashion. Having said that to go from a total number of personnel 5,000 in the Marines to go to a total number of personnel of 11 in the rescue boat with uh, one boat for operations and one on a trailer was a bit of a change. Having said that Merseyside Fire and Rescue came into this equation because they took us over as part of their rescue service and that gave me the opportunity then to migrate into further platforms which I'm going to just fly through a couple of pitches. So on the top line we've got my operational background for boating and hopefully that migrates and I also get to train and work with former colleagues which is awesome. And on the bottom I've got my training, education and my present lifeboat uh, 
occupation voluntarily with Fleetwood North School Campus Blackpool, five years of operations, Warsash Maritime Academy, which is in the body of Southampton University where I work at present, teaching STCW and uh, other operations for maritime safety and survival, including offshore oil and gas, and uh, like I said earlier, Hamble Lifeboat. So, to clip through this little presentation, some of these units operated certain craft. This is the boat we use with Hamble Lifeboat. Presently, we have two boats normally rotated on an annual basis. We're lucky at the moment, we've got about 22 staff, all volunteers, one training night a week, coming from many different backgrounds, as we'll show you. The boat's a 32 foot uh, Arctic rib, twin water jet. Quite an unusual setup on that with the A frame forward on the main console, forward seated driving and then a big open back over twin uh, Ivoco turbo diesels on the back, which makes us absolutely brilliant in the Solon for shallow water and helicopter ops. Having said that as well, just to fly through, when Marine Fire 1, the fire service unit that I uh, was taken over by, um, got rid of our rib with the twin 225s on the back, MST power boats uh, built a large uh, hard-bodied boat with water jet, water jet propulsion, and then quite common for operators that I've trained with, worked with and still work with today, Royal Navy, Royal Navy Reserve and University Royal Naval Units have access now to fast ribs uh, of the Pacific 22 and 24 nature, lots of development on those. Um, within the training side, also with the lifeboats, I was lucky to be able to integrate with the Royal Navy unit, patrol boats, doing some um, insertions, patrols, boarding, helicopter ops. And uh, finally, just to hark back at the military side of life, because it is of value on the higher level type of training, the uh, Orc, the offshore raiding craft, and also collaboration with the RNLI, which we collaborate quite closely with and take a lot of guidance and a lot of support from the RNLI operationally at the fleet. So that's a bit of an overview, and now to the specific aim of the lecture, which won't take too long. So therefore, STCW, I'm just going to flash up a little bit of information, but I'm not going to labour the point too much, because the information's already in the public domain, internet, or access via normal channels. But this training is aimed at merchant naval personnel and therefore we get a wide demographic of trainees who are nominated not by the desire or the interest or the love of boats but by cabin number or their name on a muster list as a department for emergency response. So therefore some of the things I need to consider are the standards that I have to comply to and also the type of people and the limit of time to, available to do the training. So therefore, uh, the main effort is to take charge of a fast rescue boat after launch and recovery. So we do Davit Crane launching. As well as that, this is underway on ships or alongside in harbours. Participation aspects of rescue, care of casualties, and also operating of FRB engines, of which there are many different types, of which I will have no control of what type of boat people are driving when they go back to work after they've visited and I've been working with them. Additionally, with the uh, STCW side of life, it says training should be given as 21 hours. 21 hours is not a long time to take someone who's never driven a boat before other than on their previous five-day lifeboat course where they might have limited access to uh, an inflatable boat with a 15-horsepower outboard motor on the back. So again, practical training is essential. These are standards. These aren't my words. These are directly from the STC site. So what I want to do is flash up, give you a quick view and move on because the specific nature that I'm talking about is the disparity between types of people, time of training, comparisons and similarities, but more importantly is a look forward, which is already for me delightfully being supported by some of the delegates who are already here talking about further things in this presentation. So, fast rescue boat training, we also have, if we talk about the Merchant Navy side, STCW, the other side being on the lifeboat side comes under the small craft uh, rescue boat code and therefore Marine Guidance No. 466 from the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency of which we aspire to uh, adhere to and work towards comes under what we call the Solon Sea Rescue Organisation of which the lifeboat I work on, Hamble Lifeboat, complies and comes under these rules and regulations. And they're guided in the code of practice, most importantly open rescue boats less than 15 metres of which a more appropriate standard on a voluntary basis for rescue boat organisations, inshore rescue boats that might otherwise be subject to a small commercial vessel code. So it's a little bit over and above. Having said that, where do we work? Area in general, the AOO um, is the Solent Area of Operations. 
We are controlled, we are a declared facility on Hamble Lifeboat, but we also comply to these rules and regulations with the college training because the Maritime Coast Guard Agency, the Coast Guard, overrule the whole of the UK and uh, partners in European areas also. So this is a picture showing a new National Maritime Operations Centre centralised near to where I work at Warsash. Uh, and again, we've had a transition in the Coast Guard now, uh, whereas local knowledge isn't key as such because they've got a single unit able to control the whole coastline of the UK, which is kind of a change of concept. So within the two sides of life, we've got the STCW five-day lifeboat course, which then allows you as a delegate to then qualify and proceed onto the three-day fast rescue boat course, of which actually two days is practical because day one contains half-day theory plus capsize and rewriting drill. So the types of boats I'm taking people from training on are these ones driving small things like small Zodiacs with a 15 horsepower engine and then potentially finish on a Friday straight into something of this nature, more technical, more speed, more uh, possibility of things to go audibly wrong, particularly due to lack of experience. So we need to try and ensure people are safety conscious and that's where vital components like uh, emergency stop or kill cords, collision avoidance awareness and a little bit of low level, nav uh, low level navigation is key. So, just to show you where I work, just to give you an idea, this is Wars Ash Maritime Academy. From the lifeboat side of life, we go to the fast rescue boat side. This is Griffin, our latest boat, Solus coded 7.5 metre rib, 175 horsepower engine, single on the back. So it's by no means in front of this audience as high a speed craft as what you're probably familiar with but it's definitely high enough to cause mayhem in the wrong hands. Having said that, we do intercoastal operations in rivers and uh, harbour and around the ship, offshore platform and ship davit installations for rescue. And this picture shows the college with the uh, boat just doing a quick turn transition just in the open water area of the Solent. So, a little table. It's not too detailed, it's fairly basic, but it does give some fair comparison. Training comparison, STCW and Hamble Lifeboat as a basis to look at the different types of training and people. Uh, course, three days for the lifeboat because it's volunteer. Crew training is on a one night a week, but you could be in there for a number of years. One of the lads has been in for 20 years plus. Having said that, experience, you need a PSCRB, lifeboat ticket for STCW. Uh, coxswains might need a level two RYA in the UK, but probably not much for the crew. Having said that, ship ops, launch and recovery, capsize and rewriting drills are key for STCW merchant fleet. Whereas we concentrate on the lifeboat harbour operations already afloat, launch and recovery. And also basic navigation and collision regs because we can't go to sea and not think about not hitting someone else. And also advanced nav and collision regs for the lifeboat because we work on a more regular, more common local basis. As well as that, uh, if I consider the comparison between the two units again, most things are the same, apart from at the bottom, a bit of basic casualty care for the merchant fleet because they are rapid training short term. And with the lifeboat, we get the opportunity to have more advanced care and we also carry a paramedic on the boat, which is helpful. Uh, as well as that, the type of people, the personnel profile is quite interesting. With the officer watch cadets for deck engineering and electrotechnical officers, they are the sort of people, along with OBS, which is on board services, could be stewardesses, could be anybody, on cruise liners, etc., maybe not as above. We have military people for ice patrol ship or auxiliary ships, border force and offshore operators, and then professional officers of the watch, super yachts and other units coming through, things like oil spill response and other. Furthermore, on the li lifeboat, we have more of a controlled audience of people who are a bit more industry-led or historically already qualified. So what I've got to do now is just show you three more slides and I think this is just about unfinished. I'm going to, what I'll do, I'll miss the lifeboat video if it doesn't play. If this, play, if this plays, I'll let it play. If it doesn't, I'll just move on. So with the volunteer lifeboat, we've got a small movie clip showing a response exercise to a person in the water from our base being responded and then continuing on task, moving out on task, picking up a person and back to base. It's only a short video, but it goes to show the guys need to be prepared. There is a bit of a soundtrack, but it's not important. It's mo mostly music. 
if it's a buffering issue, I'll just scrub around it. I'm not that fussed. But basically, anyone who operates a boat knows that you need not only to get out on a boat and a bit of red mist, blue lights on, sirens, and go as fast as you possibly can, but absolutely kit yourself up, and you cannot rescue anybody if subsequently you need to be rescued yourself. So that's some of the things that are key for us. We'll scrub around that, go back to the PowerPoint, please, yeah. I'll say the video is just a little bit of an overview, it's not terribly essential. There we go. So, in short, a couple of things to consider. What do we do? Basic mission SAR, plan and task execution. So obviously there's navigation, planning, search and rescue coordination search patterns, of which we've now moved into simulation mostly and also plotters for live operations. And therefore, future training, the two things that was key to see here, observe, and not only play with the equipment, but see other people while they're using equipment live or simulated, was training for STCW needing to pick up speed and modernize. And um, particularly thinking about simulation uh, to help with craft handling, navigation, collision avoidance, Introduction to operating training areas for uh, safety of operators on the water. Search and rescue operations and search pattern practice before implementation. And then the consideration for deteriorating weather, because I cannot deliver someone fast boat training in snow in July. It doesn't normally work. Uh, command and control, plotter radio and radar training in support of existing simulation, which this is just a big ship simulator for big ship drivers of which I would hope and expect at some point we'll be able to integrate and apply more small boat operations for small boat drivers also at high speed. Having said that, the boat we use is uh, considering uh, all of these different issues, whole body vibration, command and control, and able to be able to keep people from having such things like spinal or other musculoskeletal injuries. And like I said, if anybody wants to ask any information, you can get in touch with me at the university. There are ideas I want to take from you. Thanks to uh, the Ullmans and Will, particularly yourself, Carl, for helping me out with the presentation. And thanks for being a fabulous audience and giving me a chance to come and talk to you. That's it.